Hello everybody, my name is Jonas Benov and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create some helping layers that will help you judge your images and help your eyes find the damages and finally even fix them. Please notice that this is not a complete workflow, so you should basically just do it in the end or when you really need it, but you should do all your basic cleanup, all your cloning, your healing, everything like this should have been done before before you try and work with these groups here. So first of all I've created a group here called help and inside of this group I've got another group called brightness and this group I'm going to explain to you first. Inside of this group are two adjustment layers. I'm going to activate them. One is called darken, the other one is called desaturate. The desaturate one is just a black and white adjustment layer set to saturation mode. And the darken layer is just a curves layer with the black with the midpoint darkened a little. So we are effectively darkening our image. So why do we need this? That's pretty easy to say because as you can see now, more clearly than you can than you could see we have some lightning inconsistencies inside of our image and we can try and fix these with this group with this group here active to do this I'm going to create a new layer call it dodge and burn which is the process that we're going to need I'm going to set its mode to soft light and fill it with the soft light neutral color of 50% gray next I'm going to Reset my swatches to black and white and choose the brush tool. And now with a very low opacity I'm just going to darken areas with a black brush and lighten areas with a white brush. I've already created an, a video about how to do dodge and burn, so I'm not going to spend too much time on this, because basically it's all about evening out the lighting, and in a later stage creating some depth, and sculpting your image. But for this, the brightness group is no longer needed, because this is just needed as long as we are trying to unify the lighting inside of our image. So once we are done with it, we can check our progress by activating and deactivating our dodge and burn layer. And as we can see, we've we haven't done too much yet, but as you can imagine, the more we do, the cleaner the skin will get. And with the help of this brightness group, it's more easily for me to see the areas that need changes and that need brightening or darkening. The next group that I'm going to show you is a group called Saturation. Inside of this are two layers, two adjustment layers once again. One is called Saturation, the other one is called Lighten. And I'm going to show it to you. Let's first zoom out a little. And this layer is basically a selective color adjustment layer. This one is a levels adjustment layer, which is not all that important. It just lightens the image. So let's check what the Saturation adjustment layer do does. Inside of it, we've set it to the method of absolute, and I've decreased the black value and all of the colors to negative 100%, so all of these are going to be white. And I've set the black value inside of all the neutral colors, that means whites, neutrals, and blacks, to plus 100%, and what this does is basically give us an image that shows us black where there's areas of low saturation and white where there's areas of high saturation. 
the lighten adjustment layer above it is just set for to lighten the image so I can see the differences more clearly. Now what we are going to do is choose one of the two processes with this because we can either use the manual process which would be to create a new layer call it saturation set its mode to saturation and choose a neutral that means a 0% saturated brush and a 100% saturated one with a brightness of let's say 100% but the brightness isn't important at all it's just there to see it a little more clearly once again I'm going to use my brush tool and now the areas that I want to lighten that means that I want to saturate a little more I'm going to paint on these with my red brush and the areas that are too saturated I'm going to choose my neutral brush and just brush over these to desaturate them a little. You have to be very careful with your saturation brushes though because they are extremely sensitive and so it's very easy for you to go overboard and I will recommend to you that you choose very very low settings for the opacity and flow to handle it a little more gently. Once again we can do this as long as we want to. It enhance the saturation as much as we want. You'll just have to watch out that you're not creating a plastic doll which has the whole the same amount of saturation in the whole face. And so we want to keep a little natural satura uh, natural variation. But we don't want any areas that are extremely different from the rest and so we're just going to unify it as we are unifying the brightness values with the dungeon band. The other method for this that is a little less accurate but also lots faster is to simply create a mask from this mask here and select just the areas that we want to affect. To do this I'm going to the channels palette. I'm going to pick any of the individual channels and drag them to this little icon here. in order to load the luminosity of this channel as a selection. Now I'm going to the quick mask mode and I'm going to use image adjustments curves and now I'm going to for example command or control click, click on, area, on any area that I want to affect, raise it to white And now just move the curves so that just this area here is affected and the other areas are not affected. Once you're done, exit Quick Mask and use a Hue and Saturation Adjustment layer. I'm just going to call it Saturation and put its mode to Saturation as well. Now this mask is the wrong way, so I'm going to use Image Mode. Uh, image adjustments invert and now here's the beauty of the thing you can increase or decrease the saturation in these areas and you'll see the results on the fly so for example I could raise the, bright, uh, the saturation to plus 15 here and maybe give the mask a little feather to feather it out to make it a little more smooth and you can see that with this 
you can work lots and lots faster, but because it's more automated, it's also a little less accurate and you don't have as much control as you have with the paintbrush. The next thing I want to show you is the color group. And this group consists of three layers, three individual layers. The first one is called luminosity. It's a fill layer which has zero hue, zero saturation and 50% brightness. It is set to luminosity mode. This alone will give us the hue and the saturation of the image without any luminosity information. Or with a luminosity information of 128. The next layer is called saturation. It is a layer with 0% hue, 50% saturation and 100% brightness. It is set to saturation mode and this is basically to unify the saturation so that we are left with the pure hues in our image. Now because, um, strictly speaking, I can't see anything in this image here, I've also set up a solar curve to help me find the differences between the individual hues. A solar curve is basically just a normal curves adjustment layer in which you raise and lower the individual points in a very funky way so it brings out the differences lots more. Now to work with this, I'm once again going to create a new hue and saturation adjustment layer. I'm going to call the first one hue minus 15, set its mode to hue, and slide the hue slider to minus 15. You can immediately, immediately see that the whole th thing, the whole skin is going to go a little darker. Some areas are also turning green. And of course, the color depend really that you're going to see really depends on the solar curve you, you use. I've set up mine so your results could look a lot different. So because we don't want to affect all of the hues yet, we are going to alt click on the mask icon and therefore the whole adjustment is set off. Next I'm going to create another hue and saturation adjustment layer, call this one hue plus 15, mode once again set to hue, and in this one I'm going to slide the hue slider to plus 15, and once again alt click on the masks icon to create a black mask. Now once again we can use the brush, with a white brush we can reveal the individual adjustment layers, and for example, remove some of the darker color here and therefore unify the skin color. Once again, you have to be really careful with this because it's really easy to go too far and create a skin that looks like it just has, has one color, one hue and this will look very odd so you should be really careful with all of these adjustments. Going to enhance the lips as well because they had a little green down here so they had a little distinct hue. Going to paint on this. For example here we have hue that is too bright, so we are going to activate our hue minus 15 layer and just paint on this. And so, once again, we could go go on and go on and unify the whole thing so that in the end it looks really nice. She has really nice skin tones without any inconsistencies. Of course there's a shortcut as well for this because you could 
first of all, create a hue mask. So maybe you'll create a gradient map. Set the individual points. Set first one to the shadow skin color. Create one in the middle. Set it to a color of any middle skin tone. And set a next one. Set it to a highlight. Oops. Middle one was a little too dark. I'm just going to click here, for example. And now set this one to hue. And as you can see, this really enhanced the skin tones. But of course, this will give you a very monochromatic look. And so, I would recommend to you that you set the opacity to at most 30% and use this very selectively, if at all. Or another nice thing is to just use the select color range command. Click on any of the areas that you want to affect. For example, it's really the dark part here. Raise or lower the fuzziness until you're happy with the results that you can see here. And now, once again, create a hue and saturation adjustment layer. Call it hue. Set the mode to hue. And now you can raise or lower the hue. Give the mask a little feather. This was too much. And I would say because just going to raise the hue to about plus five is going to be enough. And so we've enhanced the hue as well. The last, thing, the last adjustment layer inside of this help group is the single solar curve. It's the same solar curve I've used with the color adjustments, but because I'm pretty lazy, I've just created the groups so that I can activate and deactivate the individual set, the individual groups, and immediately see the results. The solar curve alone does the same thing as it does with the within the color group, it finds differences inside of my image. And this is a pretty nice thing, because, for example, now I can really easily see spots and zits that remained on the skin, and I can remove them. For example, here on her forehead, I've left some pimples that are really, really hard to detect, without the solar curve, but once I've set it, they are really easy to see. And so what I can do now is, once again, create a new layer, call it norm normal, set the mode to normal, and now I'm just going to use my healing brush, set it to current and below, alt-click anywhere near, to sample, and just get rid of all of this damage that you can see in this image. Once you're done with all of your corrections, you can of course deactivate the help layer again. And so, we are done. There you have it. These are my personal adjustment layers, help layers that I use to help me judge an image, find any spots that I need to work on still. I hope you enjoyed it, maybe you can use it. I'll of course provide to you the action that I've created to create all of these adjustment layers. If you have any questions left, feel free to email me jonas underscore benloff at web.de Write me in Skype, Jonas W234. Goodbye.